Gospel of December 19, 2014 A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke In the days of Herod, king of Judea, there was a priest named Zechariah, of the priestly division of Abijay. His wife was from the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. Both were righteous in the eyes of God, observing all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord blamelessly. But they had no child, because Elizabeth was barren, and both were, were advanced in years. Once, when he was serving as priest in his division's turn before God, according to the practice of the priestly service, he was chosen by Lot to enter the sanctuary of the Lord to burn incense. Then, when the whole assembly of the people was praying outside at the hour of the incense offering, the angel of the Lord appeared to him, standing at the right of the altar of incense. Zechariah was troubled by what he saw, and fear, and fear came upon him. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zechariah, because your prayer has been heard. Your wife Elizabeth, Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you shall name him John, and you will have joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth, for he will be great in the sight of the Lord. He will drink neither wine nor strong drink. He will be filled with the Holy Spirit, even from his mother's womb. And he will turn many of the children of Israel to the Lord their God. He will go before him in the spirit and power of Eliah, to turn the hearts of fathers toward children, and the disobedient to the understanding of the righteous, to prepare a people fit for the Lord. Then Zechariah said to the, to the angel, How shall I know this? For I am an old man, and my wife is a passengers. And the angel said to him in reply, I am Gabriel, who stand before God. I was sent to speak to you and to announce you this good news. But now you will be speechless and unable to talk, until the day these things take place, because you did not believe my words, which will be fulfilled at their proper time. Meanwhile, the people were awaiting for Zechariah and were amazed that he stayed so long in the sanctuary. But when he came out, he was unable to speak to them, and they realized that he had seen a vision in the sanctuary. He was gesturing to them, but remained mute. Then, when his days of ministry were completed, he went home. After this time, his wife Elizabeth conceived, and she went into seclusion for five months, saying, So has the Lord done for me at a time when he has seen when he has seen fit to take away my disgrace before others. Gospel of the Lord, praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Back then, it was a disgrace not to be fertile. They thought that they were somehow cursed when God did not bless them with children. It is also interesting for us, for our meditation, to read a little bit of the book of Judges. There was a certain man from Sora, of the clan of Danites, whose name was Manoah. His wife was barren and had borne no children. An angel of the Lord appeared to her and said, Though you are barren, yet you will conceive of your son. Be careful to take no wine or strong drink, and to eat nothing unclean. The son you will conceive and bear will be consecrated to God from the womb. It is he who will begin to the deliverance of Israel from the power of the Philistines. The woman bore a son and named him Samson. The boy grew up and the Lord blessed him, and the Spirit of the Lord stirred him. Gospel. Oh, Word of God. Okay. Today, I believe that we should talk about the Holy Spirit and especially the effects of the Holy Spirit in the people. First, a contrast. We see many actors in the scene. Central today is Zechariah, this priest that attended the temple. He and his wife were held as righteous by God because they observe all commandments and ordinances of the Lord without blame. Yet Zechariah was missing something very important. 
He was missing the Holy Spirit. He might have followed his vocation and accepted the work of priest without truly devoting himself totally and absolutely to God. Sometimes it is not as difficult to fall into that category when we will give God 80% of us, 90% of us, even 99% of us. But he does not want 80 or 90 or 99. He wants 100 and 101% of us, if that is possible. We see how Zechariah questions the angel. How can I be sure of that? We can compare that to the mother of Samson. She does not question the angel. She just acts on the words of the angel. And she bears a son, even though she was barren, the same as Elizabeth. We also see another person that is not barren, but is a virgin, Mary. Mary questions the angel, but she does not want to have assurances of how could it be done. Rather, she wants to know, she wants to find out if she can preserve her virginity. I have no intimate relations with any man. When she finds out that the offering is through the Holy Spirit that comes from God, she immediately accepts. And yet the priest is not able to do the same, and thus becomes, becomes mute. Gabriel, the angel sent to Zechariah, announces the coming of the John the Baptist, who is going to do something ver some things very important. I was talking at the beginning about the Holy Spirit, and especially the effects to those who are open to him. Samson, that hero of the Israelites, was moved by the Holy Spirit. He could not do all his strongman feats when he wanted. It was when the Holy Spirit filled him that he would act wondrously. And it is the very same thing with John the Baptist. It is he who is moved by the Spirit of the Lord, very much so as we see in the Lord himself, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. And he was filled with the Holy Spirit always in the absolute plenitude because he remained God, even incarnated. Where do we stand? Who do we or can we compare to? God forbid that we might be like Zechariah. That being consecrated we are far from being docile to the motions of the Holy Spirit. May we be like Samson. Better yet, may we be like the Baptist. Full of the Holy Spirit and being moved everywhere, every time by Him. Let us humbly ask our Father in heaven that he might again renew his Holy Spirit in us and make us docile to the Spirit so that we can contemplate the incarnation of his Son and not only contemplate him but allow him to be born in our conscience, in our hearts and to act living every single day of our life. Until we meet in heaven, God bless you all, brothers.